Hello everyone. So today we are going to talk about lactic acid fermentation of fruits and vegetables. So in this topic we are going to cover what is lactic acid fermentation of fruits and vegetables, the growth pattern of natural lactic acid bacteria, the uh, two processes of uh, producing sauerkraut and kimchi. So firstly let's discuss what is the fermentation of fruits and vegetables so as you can see it is a technique used whereby starches and sugars in vegetables and fruits are converted into lactic acid by some species of lactic acid producing bacteria from this flow chart it is clear that fermented fruits and vegetables are formed with the help of some microorganisms which include lactic acid bacteria as well as yeast and they produce some bioactive compounds whereby in which are the main components of these fermented fruits and vegetables and these bioactive compounds are there yeah, could be vitamins enzymes organic acids bacteriocins explosaccharides or biogenic amides these lactic acid this lactic acid fermentation has been carried out for thousands of years to preserve surplus and perishable food stuff as well as to enhance the taste of the food organoleptically this fermentation process of vegetables results in increasing the nutrition of the food as well as the shelf life that is if the raw material if the raw food can be stored for one month these vegetables could range from 6 uh, month to 1 year or more with the help of refrigeration or sometimes without that too <coughs> salting it is the main process which assist in the development of lactic acid bacteria because it provides an environment where the lactic acid bacteria gets the desired ph for their growth and this salting requires two main thing that is proper temperature as well as a good quality of raw material so let's see the growth pattern of this natural lactic acid bacteria so firstly the raw material the raw material has a large number of undesirable microorganisms and some population of lactic acid bacteria this lactic acid bacteria during fermentation shows the sequential growth the sequential growth of these species lactococcus species leuconostoc species lactobacillus species and pediococcus species along with the raw material what else is needed is the presence of salt a large number of fermentable sugars absence of oxygen and a low fermentation temperature the salt is used as at 2 0.25% of the uh, weight of the raw material because this is the most desirable uh, temp, uh, concentration of salt and this allows the uh, growth of leuconostoc species the mainly consist of leuconostoc mesenteroids which grows rapidly until the acidity reaches 1% after that the growth of leuconostoc mesenteroids slow down and lactobacillus brevis starts growing rapidly until the acidity reaches 1.5% after that once the acidity reaches 1.5% then the species known as pediococcus pentosaceus takes over and takes the acidity to 1.8% after that lactobacillus plantarum takes over and brings the acidity level to 2% these all microorganisms metabolize lactose pentose hexose and some other sugars to lactate acetate ethanol carbon dioxide diacetyl and some flavoring compounds so uh, it will be more clear from this table 
that uh, first the leuconostoc species the leu the leuconostoc mesenteroid starts growing when they get the desired uh, salt concentration and takes the acidity to 1% after the acidity reaches 1% the leuconostoc mesenteroid's growth starts decreasing or slows down and lactobacillus brevis increases their growth and takes the acidity to 1.5%. After that, Pediococcus pentosaceus takes over and takes the acidity to 1.8%. And after that, finally, the Lactobacillus plantarum takes the acidity to 2%. So, moving forward, what we have now is the production process of uh, these fermented products. So, Making these fermented products, first of all, needs collecting the raw materials, which depends upon the desired final product. Suppose if you want to make sauerkraut, you need cabbage for that. That is the main raw material behind these. And uh, also, the quality of these raw material is important. After the raw material is collected, it goes in the primary processing, which is the washing, coring, trimming, cutting, peeling, blanching, and cooking. Coring basically means removing the uh, hard core from the vegetables or some seeds if they are present. Along with these processes, light treatment is also used. Light treatment, uh, once the light treatment is done, before the fermentation process, uh, then the vegetables are again washed to remove excess dry solution so, uh, so that the uh, desired pH is obtained. This light treatment is basically done to remove extra undesirable microorganisms. Of course, you can't remove all, but it can just reduce their number. So, in case of uh, sauerkraut fermentation, the chopping of cabbage is the essential step in primary processing. Uh, why? I will tell you this in the coming slides. So, the next step is salting. So, for salting, there can be three major categories in which salting can be done for fruits and vegetables. It can be dry salted, it can be brine salted, or it can be non-salted. So, first of all, let's see what is dry salting. In dry salting, salt is applied to already chopped raw vegetables. Due to osmotic extraction, in dry salting, salt is applied to raw chopped vegetables. The amount of salt depends upon the raw vegetables raw material and it generally ranges between 2 to 2.5 percent of vegetable weight now due to the osmotic extraction of the water from the plant tissues which is maximum if the vegetable is chopped finely that i was talking in the previous slide that if you cut the vegetable finely the more amount of osmotic extraction will take place the water and sugars will release from the cells and the better salting of this will be done. So coming to the next is brine salting. In brine salting, it is uh, used for those vegetables where extraction of sufficient amount of water is not possible. So here immersion of vegetables in brine solution is done and uh, Carbohydrates and other nutrients are extracted and substrate for upcoming fermentation is formed. Then comes the process of pit fermentation or non-salted fermentation. It is basically, uh, you can call as no salting step. That is before fermentation, no salting is done. So the first step in this process was collecting the raw materials, then it was the primary processing, then the salting, and then comes the fermentation process.
So if salting is performed, then the temperature becomes the most critical parameter in determining the outcome of the fermentation because of course the moisture content and uh, the salting will enhance the pH as well and these all things should be considered as uh, for bacterial growth there should be optimum conditions so moving to the secondary treatment the secondary treatment might involve drying pasteurization or some other treatments depending upon the product and once the product is ready it is packed and consumed either as it is or after heat treatment such as boiling or frying so this is the this was the whole treatment of how the uh, process goes now let's see the first product that is sauerkraut so sauerkraut is a product which is produced by fermenting shredded cabbage or finely cut cabbage that has been fermented by various lactic acid bacteria this fermentation is done because fresh cabbage has a shelf life but sauerkraut has an enhanced shelf life it can be stored for longer periods of time and it is a natural and spontaneous fermentation which take place in case of sauerkraut now let's see how this process goes on and also sauerkraut uh, is a german word not the product but word so let's see the process here comes the first thing which you need to do is clean trim and slice the cabbage here fine shredding will help the sugar present in cabbage to come out of the cells then it is mixed with salt which encourages lactic acid bacterial growth and prevent the growth of other undesirable bacteria then tight pressing of uh, these vegetables together is done in an appropriate vat which enables anaerobic bacteria to grow and discourages the aerobic bacterial growth then the fermentation temperature is kept at 18 degrees celsius which again helps in lactic acid bacterial growth now there are some natural inhibitors in cabbage which discourage the growth of gram positive and gram negative bacteria as well and the most critical step in this whole process is the beginning of the fermentation as naturally lactic acid bacteria in these vegetables are very low in number and they must be able to increase radically to rapidly drop the ph of the cabbage and if the ph fails to drop rapidly enough spoilage bacteria present in the cabbage naturally will take over the process and the product will spoil so every step has its own importance and dropping of the ph is the major thing here so let's talk about the second product that is kimchi so kimchi it is a fermented vegetable with probiotic lactic acid bacteria the main vegetable used here is cabbage however sometimes ginger garlic and red pepper are also used probiotic lactic acid bacteria are present in 10 to the power 8 to 10 to the power 9 cfu grams uh, cfu per gram in kimchi and it is an excellent probiotic food after the fermentation is performed so let's see the process how it goes how it goes now firstly in this process we need to wash the vegetable with clean water and slice them then we add salt and spices to it and keep it for fermentation at 4 degrees celsius for 3 weeks or 15 degrees celsius for 4 days as per the convenience for kimchi production the most important species which are uh, required for fermentation are lactobacillus brevis 
lactobacillus plantarum lactobacillus mesenteroides and pediococcus endosaceus along with that because of uh, this uh, kimchi being probiotic the health benefits it uh, gives are enhancing intestinal health giving anti carcinogenic effects and decreasing the obesity and cholesterol of the of uh, of course the people so uh, thank you for watching this video and uh, we have a quiz and the link is given in the description you can just go and uh, solve some questions you will get to know how much you learned about this for any queries of course you can drop the comments and if you want proper notes on this that is available on our website that is www.foodtechgaze.co.in thank you so much for watching this video